Hey y'all, it's Lisa and welcome to Our Gray House where I share DIYs and inspo for home, food, travel, all on a budget. So if you enjoy that too, hit that subscribe button and let's be best friends. Let's be besties. Today's video is a challenge video called Fun Time Friday and it's hosted by Broke Girl Aesthetic and Six Kids and a Glue Gun and I'll have a link to their channels and the playlist in the description box below. I'm sharing with you guys today two DIYs. I call them Capicot crafts because I'm basically copying two crafters that I think do an amazing job and I just wanted to try some of these for myself. And of course the links to the videos that I was inspired by will be in the description box below along with the items that I used in today's crafting. So let's get into the video. I don't know why people do that. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. I'm using two laundry room signs, two boxes, and this dowel that I had on hand and some large popsicle sticks to create today's project. I like to start off by taking off the stickers off the back of stuff because I just think it looks nicer when you do it. Now this project was actually inspired by Crafting with Maria. She did basically the same thing that I'm creating today, but hers turned out really cute. And so I was just thinking, I'll try my hand at it. So now I'm deconstructing Oh, and by the way, the link to that video is going to be in my description box below. But right now I am deconstructing or kind of dismantling this sign because all I need is actually the, the wood pieces. And so I take off the clothespins and I use my scraper tool and part of the paper came off of one of the signs. So I thought, okay, well I'll just take the paper off. Well, the paper didn't come off the rest of the sign very easily. So I took a wet rag and not like soaking wet, but just kind of a wet rag. And I put it on the paper so that it would make it a little bit easier to, to take off. And I just had to work in like little sections and put the rag down for a minute and then, you know, try to scrape, put the rag down again, scrape some more. I was trying not to make the board too wet. And after I was done, I did let it set for a few hours before starting the next step because I wanted to make sure it was dry. I'm cutting down these popsicle sticks because I want to cover up the holes on each end of the box. Crafting with Maria did this and as she said, and I'll tell you as well, it's totally not necessary. You're not really going to see it anyway, but I just thought, Hey, you know, I, I thought it would look a little bit nicer finished out as well. So I cut off the ends of the popsicle sticks to size and I stuck those in there and I used binder clips to hold them down and I did let it dry for several hours before I moved on to the next step. I'm using spackle to cover up the holes where the hanger was. However, I was a little generous with the spackle and I didn't necessarily wipe all of it off and because I thought it was like not a big deal. But as you'll see in a little bit, it actually becomes not a big deal, but it, it becomes an issue a little bit later on. So I make sure the holes are filled up on both sides and then let it dry. And I start to just sand it down so it's smooth. Then of course I remove that one tag that's on the back before I go to the next step. I'm using for the first time Waverly's wax in the color antique. So I start off by putting the wax down and it's going okay. So far so good. Little bit generous with this application, but again, I just use the excess to start staining the boxes and I'm not, I'm not super good at it yet. So if you guys have any tips or tricks on how to use this Waverly wax better, please leave me a comment below because I really want to learn how to be a better crafter. I do like how it's adhering to the boxes and so I'm pretty happy with that, but you can already see a little splotch on one of the boards and yeah, it doesn't get better. But now I'm going to cut the dowel for the handle of my project. And so I'm just measuring it against the wood box that I'm using. And y'all, I'm not, I'm not really good at the measuring stuff. So, nor am I really good at the cutting stuff apparently because I have to call in reinforcements. And by reinforcements, I mean Marvin. 
So Marvin joins me and he takes over and he's going to take care of business. He's measured twice, cut once kind of guy. And so, yeah, he takes care of the cutting of the dowel for me. Thank you, Marvin. But also he made the, the table jiggle a whole lot. But it's okay because he did the cutting, not me. Now I'm going to stain the other side. And this is where I really start to notice that the wax is not adhering to some parts of this board. And the more noticeable parts are where I had the spackle. And, you know, I thought, well, I just didn't apply enough wax. I just, I need to put more wax or I need to, I don't know what to do about it. But, and I don't know if it's because the board was too wet or if because the, the spackle was there. I really am not sure why it didn't adhere properly but yeah you can kind of just see the splotchiness and I just I wasn't happy with that I also ruined my manicure I'm staining the dowel that goes in between and making sure that it's covered well again ruining the manicure though I literally just got that manicure two days before I filmed this so I'm like really Elisa but it's okay I decided to go in with Rust-Oleum's chalked ultra matte paint in the color linen white you know it's one of my favorite colors so I'm giving it a good generous coat and letting that dry now we're done and we're gonna assemble this little tiered stand and I'm hot gluing them because they're not really holding anything super heavy it's more de decorative than anything else I attach the two trays and here's where it gets a little bit wonky when I start to attach the other board I put the hot glue on just like I did and man that stuck like Chuck and is a little little off but it's okay and then I add the handle and I ended up staining the inside but I don't show you that so just pretend I showed you the inside so this is how it turned out and I used my lemon easy peasy lemon squeezy decor from my last video and I think it turned out overall pretty super cute This project was inspired by All Things Crafty. She did a much larger version. I think she used nine crates. I'm just using four crates and I'm using four of these wooden frames. I'm specifically using them for that little thing at the bottom, the little label thing at the bottom, and I'm not using the frames, but I can use them for another project. I'm also using a large paint stick. If you're making a bigger project, of course you'll need more paint sticks, but I'll have a link to All Things Crafty's video in the description box below so you guys can check that out as well and see how her project turned out. I am again taking off the stickers because that's what I like to do. And then I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put these together because if you're familiar with Dollar Tree, their things are not always square. So sometimes you gotta kind of figure out which is gonna have the least amount of gap for your project. I'm going to be also taking some popsicle sticks and covering up the holes just on one end of the crate. I think it looks finished out. I'm pretty sure All Things Crafty did this too, but I just think it looks a little bit more finished out when I do that. So cutting the popsicle sticks down to size and then you, using the Elmer's Wood Glue Max to glue those inside of the little crates. Because I don't want you to see the top where it's, it's got a hole in the top, I'm going to be cutting some of these popsicle sticks down to, to kind of make a um, top to it, if you will. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap because when I glue them together, I'll put the final popsicle stick in place at that time. And so I'm doing that for both of the top pieces. Then I'm gonna start gluing the boxes together. I'm using, again, Elmer's wood glue, and I'm gonna be using those binder little pink clips, those little clamps that you can get from Dollar Tree, and clamping those together and then putting it on top. Now I'm taking off these little, these have the smallest screws ever. And so it took me a little bit to get these screws off and uh, get the screws out and then of course remove those little label things. But after I got going, it was, it was fine. Now that the glue has dried, I am going to put some spackle to kind of, again, just cover up where things didn't meet up perfectly and 
then I'm going to be painting over it so you're not going to see that spackle. And I'm not using antique wax this time, so, or Waverly wax this time, so don't have to worry about the splotches. Now I'm just sanding it down to make sure it's smooth and getting ready to paint it. I need to cut down this paint stick to cover up. I need to cut the paint stick, basically. And I need two pieces because I'm putting two pieces on. And I'm actually cutting it myself. And so I'm just kind of quickly measuring it. You know, I just don't do the whole ruler measure thing. Probably will regret it in some of my DIYs, but I don't know. That's why I, that's why I asked Marvin to help me because he will do that. So I'm also having to sand off the edges just a little bit so they're smooth. And then I'm going to take some Elmer's Wood Glue Max again. That's my favorite right now. And put those sticks onto the little cubbies. Now I'm going to be painting this with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Linen White. It's a color I always use, guys. I almost feel like I'm just repetitive when I say it, but that's the color I'm using. And I'm trying to paint in all the cubbies. I would recommend trying to paint or painting before you, uh, at least the inside of the, the crates, before you assemble it because it was a little harder to get into the bottom of the crate. But you're not really going to see the bottom of the crate, so you won't really notice that some of them are not that great. Now I'm attaching back, or not back, I'm attaching those little label holders that I took off of the wood photo frames and I'm just attaching them there. Marvin had marked for me, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's little dots on there. Marvin had marked for me where these go because you know me, I'm not going to be able to measure that well and that's, yeah, that would require a ruler and I I needed him for that. So he helped me with that. So if they look great, thanks Marvin. This is how it turned out. I'm just storing some little seashells that I got from the Dollar Tree, some buttons that I had on hand, but I think it turned out pretty darn cute. Thank y'all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed today's craft. I enjoyed crafting with you and I sure hope you check out all the links to the channels that I mentioned as well as the playlist in my description box below. And don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.